हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू वॉम वेलकम टू दी वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज फ्रॉम निशा एकेडमी होप यू ऑल हर इंजॉइंग दी नाइस वेकेशन एट होम बट इट इज़ ए वेरी हाई टाइम बिकॉज फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट ईयर इट इज बोर्ड विल टेक एन एग्जाम इन मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुआरी so it is a very critical situation for our students to learn very fast so uh, in physics myself rakesh you had learned with me in last year today we are going to start the class of light reflection and refraction we already come across the basic principles of light in standard 8 so i'm your physics teacher rakesh will teach you the light its reflection and refraction principles in this chapter now let us learn the basics of light we are observing the variety of the objects in the world around us how we are able to see it can you guess yes we can see in the light but we cannot see them in the dark why it is so when you close your eyes you observe that there is a complete darken there and there is nothing there in the room but as soon as the light is there we can see all the object around us so light is the form of energy which helps us to see the object when light falls on the object it reflects the light and when the light reflected will reaches to our eyes we can see the object the basic uh, light will travel in the straight line the common phenomena of the lights are the formation of shadows the image formed by the mirrors and lenses bending of the light by medium twinkling of the stars formation of the rainbows etc the different phenomena in our day to day life that we are come across and that is because of the light you can see the two basic picture shown below when we in the darkness when we throw the torch light on an object we can able to see but as soon as torch is switched off we are unable to see the object why it is so because when the light falls on the object and that reflected light will reaches to our eyes and our eye will capture that light and we are able to see that object so in this chapter we are learning about the basics of light and the image created by the plane mirrors and the different types of mirrors see these are the two different four different pictures are there in which you can see the different phenomena in first figure you can see there is a plane mirror when we throw the light from the torch it reflects from the mirror and will follow in the another direction in the second figure you can see there is a glass of water and there is a two straw which is inserted but from the outside you can see that the straws are broken why it happens can you guess yes in the third figure you can see a rainbow and in the fourth figure you can see there is a glass prism when a white light incident on it it will disperse into the seven different colors of rainbow why this is this is the very beautiful phenomena happens around us so let us learn so we had studied we can see in the light but we cannot see in the dark room what makes the thing visible that is the light sunlight helps us to see the object any object will reflects the light that falls on it the reflected light when received by our eyes enables us to see the things we are able to see through the transparent medium 
as the light is transmitted through it. We cannot see through the opaque object because light is unable to pass through it. There are numbers of common wonderful phenomena as we had seen previous slide. There are because of the light. reflection of light. We had already come across the two basic principles in standard 8. Let us recall, when light falls on a highly polished surface like a mirror, you do have a mirror in your house. Try to make an experiment with that. Like a mirror, most of the light is on that sent back into the same medium and that process is called the reflection of light. There are two basic principles of reflection of light. First, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. In the first figure, what you can see? See, there is a plane mirror and on the left side, there is an incident ray which makes an angle with a normal to the plane mirror. When it falls on the mirror, it reflects back into the another direction that is called the reflected ray. Again, the reflected ray make the same angle as the angle of incidence. So, the second principle tells that the incident ray, reflected ray and the normal to the mirror at the point of incident all lie in the same plane. So, these are the two very basic laws of reflection of light. Let us see how an image formed by the plane mirror. I think we all have a very plane mirror in our house. So, try to observe the observation which is listed below. First, the image is erect. Erected image means it is not upward, upside down, but it is a straight as you are. Second, the image is of same size as the object. When you are standing against the mirror, you can find that the same image of yourself is there in the mirror, in the height, length, width, all are the same. Third, the image is at the same distance from the mirror as the object is in front of it. Means, if you are standing one feet in front of your mirror, the image is exactly one feet inside the mirror. Third is, image is virtual cannot be obtained on a screen. So, if there is a screen behind the mirror, we cannot get an image. And the last is, the image is laterally inverted. Now, what is means by laterally inverted? When you raise your right hand, the image will show you the left hand. When you are raising the left hand, the image will show you the right hand. So, it is exactly laterally inverted image that are formed by the plane mirror. Another types of mirrors are spherical mirrors. Do you have the spoon in your home? Yes. Do you have any vessel in your home? Yes. Take any steel vessel and try to observe your self inside it. You can see that the different image that you had observed in the mirror. Why it is so? Yes, because the surface of the mirror is plain, while the surface of the vessels are some curved surfaces. So, this curved surface of shining spoon can be act as a curved mirror. Most commonly used type of curved mirrors are spherical mirrors. The reflecting surface of such mirrors can be considered 
to form a part of the sphere. So, what it indicates? If we take a sphere and we take a part of that sphere and that sphere will make a polish on the either side will act as a mirror. Such mirror whose reflecting surface are curved spherical in shape are called as a spherical mirrors. Spherical mirror is the curved mirror and which is the part of hollow sphere. Spherical mirrors are of two types. One they are concave mirror and the another denoted as a convex mirror. The concave mirror, what the concave mirror is? Concave mirror is a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is the curved inward. On the right left hand side you can see that the incidence rays are coming from the left side and they are strike on the curved surface, but they are not sent back into the straight line as they are coming. Why? Because the surface are curved surface and also we had learned the two principles that the incident angle and the reflection angle are same. So, what happens in the concave mirror? The, when the rays of the light which are parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the concave mirror they will meet at the point on the principal axis and that point is denoted as a converging point. Second mirror that is a convex mirror. Convex mirror is the spherical mirror whose surface is curved outward. The rays of the light which are parallel to the principal axis are reflected from the surface. But now in the second case see the right figure are there, but you can see that the curved surface are bent outward side. So, the reflected ray are not getting converged, but in this case it is get diverged and appear to come from the point which is behind the mirror. Behind the mirror there is an imaginary rays, but actual rays are reflected and they are not meet at principal axis on the left side, but if we extend them into the back to the mirror they will again meet on the principal axis behind the mirror. So, which is called the convex mirror. Before we will start to study about the images which is produced by the spherical mirror, we have to learn some basic terminology regarding spherical mirror. First is the center of curvature. Center of curvature is the point from which the spherical mirror is made up. So, we can say that it is the center of the sphere of which the mirror is the part. We can define them uh, that as a C. Second, radius of curvature. Radius of curvature is the radius of the sphere for which the mirror, mirror is a part. So, we can see that if we are having a circle and we cut a small part from that. So, circle of the radius is considered to be the radius of that particular part. So, it is the radius of curvature. Third is a pole. Pole is the center of the spherical mirror which lies exactly on the mirror. Fourth, fourth is the principal axis. Principal axis is the straight line which is passing through the center of curvature and the pole. We can denote it at a x y line segment. Fifth, the principal focus. Now, what is principal focus? In a concave mirror, the rays of the light which is parallel to the principal axis reflected from the surface 
and meet on the point on principal axis. See again in the previous slide, they are meeting on the principal axis. So, it is denoted as a F, it is the point on the principal axis in the convex mirror the rays of the light parallel to the principal axis after reflecting they are getting diverged, but if we extend all that rays behind the mirror they will again meet at a point behind the mirror which is also called as a principal focus. See the right figure it is behind the mirror we can denote this f. So, in both of the figure the f is denoted as a principal focus or we can say it is a focal point and the last is focal length. Focal length is the distance between pole and the principal focus. In a spherical mirror the radius of curvature is twice that of the focal length. So, we can say that if r is the radius of curvature and f is the focal length then r is equal to 2 times focal length or we can write focal length is equal to radius divided by 2. See this figure, in this figure you can clearly identify all the six terms. C center of curvature, P which is lies on the surface of mirror which is considered as a pole. F, F is the principal focus, we can also define it as a focal point. C to P, the line segment C P indicates the radius of curvature for which the mirror is a part and P F, P F is the focal length and x y, x y is the line segment which is passing from the center focal point and pole which is considered as a principal axis. So, these are the very basic things about the plane mirror and the reflex uh, spherical mirrors. In the next video, we will consider that how the spherical mirrors will create the image and what are the different distance at which we can put the object and how the image are formed. Thank you.